The invasion of Port Harcourt was a military conflict between Nigerian and Biafran military forces. Chapter 1 Background In the mid 1960s, there was a military coup led by Major Nziogwu that overthrew the democratic government which had lost credibility due to rigged elections and ensuing violence. The coup was suppressed but the mostly Igbo coup plotters were not brought to justice by the military junta that took power. The coup seemed ethnically motivated as most of the people killed were Hausa slash Fulani and Yoruba, and the military junta was headed by an Igbo man, Major General Agi Ironsai. There was a counter-coup six months later and revenge killings of the Igbo in Hausaland. This led to an exodus of the Igbo back to the southeast and an unfortunate series of events that culminated in secession and the Biafra War. Chapter 2 Battle Following the defeat in the Cross River region, the Biafrans regrouped the remnants of their troops and created the Biafran 12th Division under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Festus Akar. The 12th Division was divided into the 56th Brigade stationed in Oroshikwu and the 58th Brigade stationed in Uyo. On March 8, 1968, the beaches at Oron came under heavy Nigerian aerial and naval bombardment. The Nigerian 33rd Brigade under Colonel Ted Hammond overran Biafran defensive positions and continued towards Uyo. Due to the swiftness of the Nigerian advance, Biafran officers began to lose control of their troops. Consequently, hundreds of Biafran troops were cut off and forced to surrender after Nigerian troops stationed at Oron linked up with the Nigerian 16th and 17th Brigade in Uyo. The 16th Brigade under Colonel E. A. Chuk and 17th Brigade under Lieutenant Colonel Philemon Shand stormed through Ikit and occupied Apobo. With the Biafrans in retreat, the Nigerian 15th Brigade under Colonel Ipuola Alani a kinrenade stationed at Boni launched an attack on Port Harcourt. At the time, Port Harcourt was defended by the Biafran 52nd Brigade under Colonel Ogugo Kalu. After heavy fighting, Nigerian troops captured and dug in at on, their success would be short-lived. A division of Biafran soldiers under an Italian-born Biafran mercenary unexpectedly counter-attacked, inflicting heavy casualties before forcing the Nigerians to retreat from on. The Biafran 14th Battalion stationed in Bori panicked and retreated from the town after spotting Nigerian soldiers wearing the insignia of the Nigerian 14th Brigade. As Biafran lines around Port Harcourt crumbled, a message was sent over Radio Biafra for the defense of the city. On May 19 the Biafran Major Joseph Achuzi arrived in Port Harcourt and was made commander of Biafran troops defending the city. Port Harcourt was subjected to heavy Nigerian artillery bombardment while defending Biafran troops fiercely resisted. During five days of heavy fighting, Port Harcourt's airport and army barracks changed hands on numerous occasions but by May 24 most Biafran troops had been pushed out of the city into the surrounding areas. Major Husey stubbornly continued to fight against the Nigerians before narrowly escaping death after almost being run over by an armored car, it was then that Major Achusi abandoned fighting and retreated to Igrita. Chapter 3 – Aftermath The next day, General Adakunle said his famous announcement I will be able to capture Owari, Abba, and Umuahia in two weeks. That quote then led up to Operation Ao. Nigerian forces weren't able to capture the cities of Owari and Abba until October 1, 1968, and were unable to capture Umuahia for another year. On January 15, 1970, Biafra surrendered to Nigeria, and ended the war. A large segment of the Igbo population of the city fled in advance of its capture by federal forces into the Biafran interior, abandoning their homes and valuables. Some of those who remained were killed by troops or non Igbo residents. Many Ijo people welcomed the arrival of the federal troops and lay claim to some of vacated properties and filled local leadership positions. Following the end of the war, Igbos returned to the city. Many Igbo professionals were needed to manage the oil industry and consequently the oil companies housed them in protected areas and pressured the Nigerian government to guarantee their safety. To promote reconciliation, 
the Nigerian government guaranteed all Igbos that they could reclaim property they had abandoned during the war upon their return. This proved difficult in Port Harcourt, as the river's state government defied federal authorities and refused to evict squatters on Igbo properties. State courts often sided with the squatters, and the Igbo owners perceived this as a state policy of retribution towards them. Chapter 4, Works Cited Daily, Samuel Fury Childs A History of the Republic of Biafra, Law, Crime, and the Nigerian Civil War Cambridge University Press ISBN 9781108895958